Hello there. We are going to be watching uh, this interview with uh, everyone, Dave Filoni with Christina Ariel, host of the High Republic show uh, and probably future guest on Knights of the Nerd Republic at some point. So, yeah, finally, we're getting some good uh, con actual Star Wars content, finally. So let's jump in. Thank you. That just happened. I think you guys are a little excited, huh? All right. All right. Thank you guys for your excitement. I feel like you should bow. <laughs> What are they chanting at them? Well, that's exciting. Uh, that was so cool. Well, I told you guys it was going to be good, and I don't like the fib, so here we go. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me. It is an absolute pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys, come on. I'm, it's been too long of just talking now, about Willow. I, I actually want to hear. Did you expect The Mandalorian to become such a global phenomenon? I, you know, honestly, we're, I was just happy to get to make Star Wars, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and Dave and I were working on it. It was a small project at the time because there were movies happening and there was a lot going on in Star Wars. And we were, we were small and Disney Plus hadn't even launched yet. So we had no idea it would, it would become so, uh, such, a, such a big uh, cultural uh, presence especially the characters, especially, you know, uh, Mandalorian and Baby Yoda are everywhere. Oh, man, he said Baby Yoda. I think we're really Dave knows better there. John knows better than that. But I think also people really, um, it felt like people really connected with those characters at a time when, you know, we were, a lot of us were locked inside. We didn't have a lot to do. Theaters were closed. And so this these little stories started popping up in people's homes and and thank you to everybody here for for signing up for, for and uh i mean there this is why this is why we get to do what we love to do so thank you thank all of you now in this era of spoilers and leaks how do you keep exciting reveals like i don't know Groku? The return of Luke Skywalker. How do you keep those moments secret? <laughs> Up until the moment it's, they air. It's really, really difficult. We we don't, I mean, we don't even tell most everybody on set what's going on all the time. And that's not always as intentional. We we come up with little code names and things. We, I think we think of how we would have yeah, I mean, it, 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 these fans ourselves. Somehow and like that and Luke yeah, made it through. Far, we'll never know how he did it. Like trying for season to wrap Christmas presents yeah. with, all, with everybody running around the house. So and then we to... forget sometimes that people coming in, like Rosario, didn't even know that she was in a scene with Luke because it, we kept calling him Plo Koon, which <laughs> that was his nickname. When, when we made that the code, remember we thought, well, that makes sense because people think that I would bring him back because people know I like that character, but you know, and I like, but we but we didn't. We even have, you can see some of the artwork, the production art. We wouldn't even have them draw Luke Skywalker mm -hmm. in. We had them draw that. We had these character. awesome paintings of Plo Koon. And I'm like, I'll, I only get to see this. No one else got to see this. We thought of putting them in, though, at we, one point. We even had a CGI head. Yes. I, I so low-key hope they the end up bringing back Plo Koon from the dead like just for the, the walls. We actually... I would not be opposed to it at this point. Just to fool people who are working on the show. <laughs> I think that was well worth it. And there was a lot of surprise. Also, speaking of return characters, the hat is back. Oh, the, yeah. <laughs> uh, Trust the hat. Yeah, it's, Trust the hat. I'm shooting now. So, it's, yeah, I wear this more when I'm Yeah, and just know, so you set. all know, Dave is actually just began uh, the Ahsoka series. He's directing. 
That's going to be interesting. I'm, I'm very so interested in what his like film right language now, is going to be like, you know. He drove all the way here, and he's as soon as he gets off stage here, I think you have one more panel, and then yes. you go all the way back to Manhattan Beach to film. I got it. I gotta be there. I gotta be there. I had to be. We couldn't miss this. It's the most fun every day. I can't even tell you. I will say, seeing the chair and the hat on it the other day oh, was cool. was a very exciting moment. <laughs> now, if you had to pick, what is your favorite part about making Star Wars? Besides the fact that you're actually making Star Wars. Yeah, yeah that's hard. I don't know. The, the question. The answer is in the question. I know. I, I mean, it was. You know, I was a. Uh, I, I was an usher in a movie theater when Return of the Jedi was in, in theaters, and I was there watching from the audience. And uh, and it's always something I loved and always worked its way into, like, little mentions and other things I've written or done. Uh, but just the, for all the stars to align that I would be able to write a story and that we would have a medium to do it in uh, and, and to have Kathy and everybody at Lucasfilm be open to... to uh, me bringing an idea to them and then also the big part is me and dave getting to know each other from all the way back at skywalker ranch when i was mixing uh iron man he was making clone wars and i was the that's a really cool connection I and was plus the first person not at lucasfilm to see clone wars yeah yeah that's right and i said if you ever need an extra voice role and that's how i ended yeah, up being a man right in. yeah that's a really fun origin I mean, I story the way to explain it for me is like I sit down at a computer and I write a story. I write a moment. I write and I talk to John. I say, I think Ahsoka could know this kid's name because she would be able to speak somehow with him that only a Jedi could intuit. And then you write that scene and there's trees and a creek and Mando's there and Grogu's there and Ahsoka's there. And then you go over the costumes in great detail and you talk about fabrics. And you build this thing over several months leading up to a moment where you walk and it's awesome and it never stops being that awesome and it's the whole crew it's everybody involved it's not just one person because we know the only person it really was was george and he created this and we get to play in it and 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 that is like i think the spirit of everything we should be doing is you know he's hopefully looking over all of this and, and, and still guiding it because he left us such a great galaxy to play in. And that, that's how I feel about it, so. It's a beautiful sandbox. Now, aside from your cameo, were there any other baloney things that you've snuck into the Mandalorian like you did with Rebels and the Space Wolves? Well, it's not really sneaking it in. The wolves were like right there, right? So. I wasn't really snuck in. He, he thought it would be really good for me to get on camera. I debated that because I'm like, I don't think the quality of the show goes up if I'm an X-Wing pilot. I think the quality of the show goes down. I told him I'd do it if Rick and Deb did it. That's it cute. The three of us, and I was joking, but he didn't think I was joking, and he helped me do it. And now there are action figures that he makes me sign. <laughs> he, has a, he, bought, he bought a whole case. Yeah, I'm like, so. what are you doing with that? He's like, I want you to sign it. This is for my future. I'm like, you don't even, <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> They've gone up in value. Yeah. You think <laughs> NFTs are good. This is the definition, figures. the definition of a peg warmer. I'm sorry. I just don't <laughs> see it that way. But but no, I mean, there's all kinds of, uh, uh, of little things here and there. That's very there's funny. A, one thing I do in particular that pro I don't think anyone will ever see, but a lot of uh, my influence comes from obviously George, and then George's mentor is Akira Kurosawa. And so I've done a lot of study of that and talking with George about it. So I have a really small Akira Kurosawa figure, and he is in every episode I've directed somewhere in the set. And so I- Oh, that's interesting. Everybody, everybody there's your homework. Go try to find the Akira Kurosawa right figures to remind me of a lot of his principles of filmmaking that he gave to George. So he's kind of like another kind of influence on, on what I'm doing, but he's, he's in there, but you'll, it'd be very hard to see him, but, and there are little Pittsburgh homages cause I love my hometown. So you'll see Pittsburgh. That's uh, that's where we're based out of in that area. You know, but uh, penguins got lemonade. So it's kind of a bummer of a time. This is really helping 
Listen, Listen half this audience is going to go home and rewatch everything and look for that. That's story. okay. But by the way, that works for us because it, it, it helps that Disney Plus thing and we get to make more shows. So go rewatch it all you want. I'm all for that. Now, how has your working dynamic changed since the early days of developing season one? Our dynamic. Well, our, our dynamic hasn't changed much. It's just now we have so much more to do. So um, yeah. I was very spoiled in the beginning by having by having Dave. Anytime I wrote a scene or a half of a script or a script, I could send it to him. He'd call me right back. We'd talk about it. <laughs> and now, you know, because uh, of, of the success of, of Star Wars on Disney+, Plus. Dave's now doing the Ahsoka show, and so now it's a sort of the, the reverse where he's writing stuff, sending it to me, I'm commenting on that. So it's a really interesting flip on it because now I'm starting to see the vision that he's come up with, not just over the last, you know, over just these last few months, but for a decade as he's been dealing with these characters. So to see the fruition of those characters and to be able to talk to Dave and now we have a shorthand because when he started off, he came out of animation. Now he's a very experienced live action director. And so now it's like director, writers, producers talking together about the best way to tell a story that's so personal to Dave. Yeah. I cannot put into words what an exciting moment this is for me as a human. And I just want to thank you both so much for taking time Thanks. out of your can I Can I invite the people here to something? We just announced in the panel that there's something called the Mandalorian Experience. And we brought a lot of props and set pieces and droids down here and it's free. And you could uh, go to the Fairview Portals Instagram or the Star Wars Celebration app. If you're here, sorry, people at home, <laughs> but if you're here, you can womp, go womp. on down and check Yo, out all stuck with me. And costumes and everything. It's available to you. Go do the thing. Again, thank you guys so, so much for taking time out of your busy schedules to come and spend time with me. And I will say thank you again for all that you and the various cast and crew have done for Star Wars. Stick around. We've got lots more from Anaheim today here on Star Wars Celebration Live, and we'll be back in a minute. You know, that's really, that was a really interesting interview. I want to, you know, kind of like to talk about that for a second. I think it's really interesting because, you know, when you go back and you look at the, uh, again, the big Vanity Fair piece that we covered on the most recent episode of Night, or second most recent episode of Night's The Nerd Republic uh, with Octo Radio's Alden Diaz, uh, we we found, you know, they, we were talking about how John and Dave kind of clashed a lot at first over, like, you know, like the very existence of Grogu, of Baby Yoda, as it were. Um, that I, th I think it's really interesting to see their their dynamic now uh, and the way that the Mandalorian has kind of progressed in time as being this, you know, it, it is like the dominant Star Wars story right now. And I think, I think a lot of it has to do with their particular flavor and style of storytelling. And earlier, you know, Eli and I were talking and I mentioned that, ooh, ooh, we get something from these fellas. One moment. Oh, no, I can't get my cursor back. Sorry, guys. Do, sir, and we'd love to talk to you about both our title and the booth. <laughs> Let's do it. Okay, first, the title. What's going on with Star Wars? 